as well. Never mind that. That's uh... That uh, message. So, good afternoon, uh, everybody, and welcome to the uh, North Sydney Walking Strategy webinar. Uh, my name is Marcelo Ocuzzi. I'm the manager of strategic planning here at North Sydney Council, uh, which includes a, an important transport planning function as well. Uh, Nigel Turner is our senior strategic transport planner, uh, the sole occupant, I must add, to the uh, transport planning section of the, of the team. It's a, it's a small but important uh, part of the um, uh, of the function of the, of the team. Now, uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on, on which we sit, the Kamaragal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their ancestors and spirits past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge and pay my respect to any Aboriginal persons joining us today. So the purpose of uh, today's webinar is to uh, explain key aspects of the uh, walking strategy uh, and provide you also with an opportunity of uh, asking questions, raising issues uh, in a live format. Um, as you, you may have heard that, that message just that as we started, but the, the session is being recorded, uh, so be aware of that, uh, and will be made available on, on Council's website as a resource uh, into the future. So we'll, we'll try and get that up there in the next few days or so, uh, and iron out any bugs if there are any as we go. Um, all participant uh, microphones uh, will be muted throughout the session just to avoid any uh, background uh, sound and things. Um, and if you're participating via a computer or a smart device, uh, you can use the chat function to, uh, to raise any questions or comments uh, as we're going. And I think uh, they'll be live, so we'll have access to them as we're going. So feel free, please, uh, to do that. Um, now we will get to those uh, questions um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, and there's also some uh, questions and comments that have come through to us online prior to the session. And we'll get to those as well if, if time permits. Um, now, uh, alternatively, if, if you don't get uh, a chance to ask a question or make a comment uh, at the session today, uh, or something occurs to you later down the track, um, you can um, raise those through the you'll say uh, part of the website, it's your say one word at North Sydney one word dot nsw dot gov dot au, um, and uh, we will uh, respond to you as promptly as we can as well. So um, now, Nigel, uh, as I say, is the senior Str strategic transport planner here at Council, and he'll be taking you through um, the, uh, the details of the uh, of the walking strategy, the methodology that we've. Uh, chosen to use um, and its intended um, outputs as well and, and how it will work on the ground in terms of uh, pointing and prioritising uh, infrastructure. Now, the, the Council actually adopted the, 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 the North City Transport Strategy, it's that document there uh, back in 2017. It's an important document, it's, it's a fairly easy read, but it's an important uh, high-level strategic document that, that flags, amongst other things, uh, in terms of the, the modal hierarchy, the, the, the priority that we give uh, to the various modes of transport, uh, walking is, is right at the top of that tree. Um, so we recognise that and, and that's uh, uh, an item as well, a, a notion that uh, the transport for New South Wales at the state level also uh, responds to and recommends uh, and highlights. Um, but walking is, 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 a, is the most fundamental form of transport. Every trip that we make, and we encourage, obviously, uh, people that, that travel around the city, uh, uh, an increasingly congested city, uh, to do so uh, by more sustainable forms of transport, uh, you know, trains, buses, cycling and so on. But every one of those trips, even uh, trips in your car, involves uh, a, a component and sometimes a very important component of uh, the walking, um, walking part of that trip. So. This strategy tries to uh, ensure that those bits of the journey, whether they're an entire trip or part of a trip, uh, are provided for in terms of the best possible uh, infrastructure uh, available uh, and it seeks to identify and prioritise where those are, acknowledging uh, that there are limitations in council spending power um, over time. Um, so Nigel will take you through all of that, um, but we, the, the, and this piece of work tries to understand where all those priority areas should be and, and adopts a methodology for, for doing so. Um, so as I say, Council uh, will be seeking your, your feedback through uh, the, this process, seeking feedback on, on the, the methodology that we've used, 
um, the locations that we've identified for higher priority areas, uh, as well as the infrastructure types that, that are identified uh, in, the, in the walking strategy. Um, so uh, feedback uh, options, the, the, um, I think Nigel will, will talk about when it closes, the exhibition process closes, uh, it's in a couple of weeks, um, we'll get to that. Um, and your feedback and the broader community feedback is important to, uh, to ensure that we uh, build enough intelligence around this uh, that we capture uh, all of those things and, and ensure that we, uh, we put forward a comprehensive and inclusive uh, piece of work. Uh, it will be reported up to the new council in 2022, exactly when, we're not sure, it depends on a whole range of things, in, in, including uh, council's priority areas uh, of consideration for, for the new council, of course. So uh, we will be moving on onto that. Uh, so keep a, a lookout uh, for uh, reports going up to council. And if you have made a submission, you will be notified directly as well. So without further ado, I'll, I'll hand over to Noel. Uh, good afternoon again, everyone, and, and welcome to this uh, draft North Sydney Walking Strategy G information session. Um, as Marcelo said, uh, I'll, I'll be taking you through uh, the methodology that's been used in developing the walking strategy, the draft walking strategy at this stage, um, some of the key content and next steps. And I'll start by saying uh, the methodology that we've used to develop the strategy uh, is is consistent with the methodology that was identified in the transport strategy back in 2017. And that methodology was informed by uh, state government policy documents like the uh, planning guidelines for walking and cycling. And more recently, the future transport strategy, how we tr plan transport processes. Um, so there's, there's multiple levels of policy, both at state level and local level, that support the method methodology that we've used. Um, and the methodology, uh, the, the, the basics of it is that we have clearly defined the problems that uh, are currently existing around walking, and, and we, we will bring that um, problem definition to the community. We are bringing it to the community through consultation to receive feedback on that. Um, we've defined a vision which is consistent with the vision, the overarching vision for transport that's detailed in the transport strategy. And then we've identified a suite of actions and initiatives, including um, you know, particular project locations where infrastructure investment will provide the best bang for our buck. Uh, in, in terms of delivering projects that uh, address walking need on the ground. Now, um, sorry, I'll go back one. There's there's four stages that we've gone through, sorry. And, and one's the problem definition. The second is setting a, a vision for where we want to be. As I said, it's consistent with that. Suite of, um, suite of policies and uh, projects, and then identifying a way of understanding when we've achieved what we set out to achieve. Uh, the first stage in terms of uh, defining the problem, um, as we said, uh, the transport strategy kind of identifies a position for walking in, uh, in both a, a state and local policy context. And there's some consistency across um, how state government and North Sydney community sees walking and, and it is a very high priority um, in undertaking some demographic analysis. Um, one of the things that we can clearly see is that there's North Sydney has a bit of a middle age bulge, which probably isn't the right term for it, but um, a, a higher number of people in those middle age uh, age categories where, where people are more likely to walk for, for local trips and as part of the lowest longer trips. Um, there's, there's, there's fewer young people, but that's got to be offset by uh, the number of students that actually uh, come to North Sydney for, for you know, accessing schools. So that's a demographic background. In defining the problem, we also wanted to get some kind of understanding of uh, what emerging trends and technologies would impact any decisions we make now going forward. And um, while things like autonomous vehicles and, and drone deliveries get a lot of the limelight when we're discussing uh, that kind of thing, uh, it, it's important to recognize that uh, more 
fundamental land use trends are, are having a much bigger impact. Uh, land use and, and transport trends are having much bigger impact than those kind of technology led trends. Um, and one of the most fundamental things that we, um, we now have to consider is the impact of um, the lockdowns and um, pandemic response on transport, travel demand and, and actual mode share. Uh, and one of the things coming out of the New South Wales Treasury talks about the impact of, of that kind of trend on remote working and what that means for local travel demand as well as um, travel demand from workers coming in and out of the, uh, of the LGA. Uh, so that, that kind of gives us a sense of where we are now and, and then what we need to define is where we want to be and, and that was pretty clearly uh, outlined in the transport strategy um, which you know the the, tra the vision that's identified in the in the draft walking strategy is very consistent with the transport strategy it talks about a uh, happy healthy and prosperous north mid sydney community and the ways of achieving that and how closely they are linked to delivering a a more walkable uh, lga uh, is sort of where the the um, the vision kind of directs us towards is, is making North Sydney more walkable inherently will make it a happier, healthier, and more prosperous community. Um, identifying how we get there, we, we've identified three areas and they're very uh, consistent with, with all transport policies. Uh, we, we have some trans further transport policy development, which we've identified as needing to do as an output of this strategy. Um, identifying a walk or, or the methodology for delivering uh, actual infrastructure projects moving forward and identifying where uh, walking spend will have the best impact for the community. Um, that's, that's identified through the draft strategy as well. And then understanding that some of the uh, more important projects that are identified in the, in the strategy, uh, we, we have uh, only partial control over delivering those. North Sydney is at, at the very heart of the Eastern uh, Harbour City, and therefore it has a lot of classified arterial roads that pass through it. And while we need to uh, understand for ourselves um, how we would like to see those arterial roads treated, and therefore we need to develop um, projects that address some of the problems around the interaction of um, places like Neutral Bay and Cremorn and, and St. Leonard's and Crow's Nest with those arterial routes, um, those regional arterial routes, uh, we, we don't have uh, the, the, the remit to actually deliver projects to address those, uh, those problems. And, and that's got to be part of an advocacy program that, that we take back to Transport for New South Wales and, and get their buy-in for, for some of these very important projects. Uh, the, the policy development stuff, um, initiatives, initiatives that we've identified, some of them are about reviewing existing policy and uh, I've included this picture because I think there's, there's a recognition that, um, things like outdoor dining are, are something that we're going to have to, uh, ad address and support in order to support local businesses, uh, in a, as part of a, a post-pandemic response to supporting businesses. Um, but I think it's important when we review that kind of policy that we, we don't um, adversely impact uh, users of public spaces that, you know, and, and get an integrated outcome that, that addresses both uh, walking accessibility, but also uh, delivers that support for local businesses. Uh, the DCP defines, the, sorry, the Development Control Plan for North Sydney uh, defines how council um, help, helps uh, developers to plan new development in the, uh, in the LGA and reviewing that to, to maximise the benefit that we can achieve through um, development applications is, is also important. Um, there's also a number of new policy areas that uh, we think it's important to um, 
provide some policy direction on. Obviously, the, the safe travel strategy is, is kind of top of that, uh, that, that list of uh, new policies that we think should uh, be delivered to support walking. Uh, but there's also things like the construction management uh, and transport policy, which uh, I think uh, if anybody's visited North Sydney CBD recently, the, the scale of the works that are taking place, um, having some uh, policy guidance on how we manage uh, those construction uh, situations so that pedestrians don't, don't get the, the raw end of the deal is, is really important. Uh, there's a few more, but I'll, I'll come back to them if anybody has any particular questions. Uh, now, the, the North Sydney Walking Action Plan is, is this uh, methodology that we use to identify where in the LGA um, we should be targeting uh, infrastructure investment. Now, we haven't developed projects to actually address these locations. It's just a methodology for identifying where spending on uh, walking infrastructure will, A, uh, provide benefit for the most, uh, the most users of the network, um, and B, provide the best uh, impact in terms of improving the safety and amenity of, of the network, but also local access outcomes. And the way we've done that is we've looked at the walking catchment analysis for, I think it was 60 local trip attractors, which included all of North Sydney centers. It also uh, included schools. It included all of our local parks and regional parks, um, public transport stops, looking at the walking catchments around uh, that type of uh, trip node and community facilities. So we took those walking catchment analysis and we did a comparison of actual walkable distance within a set time compared to uh, a crow, crow flies distance. And where there was significant um, shortfalls in people's ability to go the full extent of, of the crow flies distance in the, in the time allotted and uh, within the road network, we, we describe that as, as there being a shortfall in, in infrastructure. And you, you'll see from that, um, th that plan that there's, like North Sydney CBD, there's actually significant impact from the Warringa Freeway on, on not being able to cross the Warringa Freeway. Uh, you know, that not being facilitated impacts the walkability to the east side of, of, of the CBD. Um, one, once we'd come up with those areas where the infrastructure wasn't providing a, a high enough level of amenity or, or uh, the, the speed of walking wasn't facilitated, we overlaid that with um, a, a map of the strategic walking network, which was, um, you know, it includes all of the recreational routes as well as uh, some of the, the most direct routes between the centres within and outside of the LGA because the, you know, the walking network extends well past the boundary of the LGA. And doing that overlay, we came up with a, a heat map of where, um, where investment in walking infrastructure and walking outcomes would provide the best outcomes for the most members of the community. And you can see from the heat map that, you know, some it, it, it's centered around the CBD and St. Leonard's and, and some of the other growth, growth precincts, but there's also some pretty clearly defined walking routes where um, between those centers where um, investment in walking infrastructure is, is seen as a, a very positive um, outcome for the whole of the LGA. Um, and and that, uh, that delivers outcomes for the strategic walking network, but also delivers those local access outcomes uh, that we're looking for to, to facilitate access for those local trip attractors as well, like schools and parks, et cetera. So th there's a list of, of the precincts and routes where um, the, that infrastructure heat map um, you know, provided the, the highest levels of heat. Um, and it, 
some of the higher priority um, routes and precincts, that we've already done some significant projects to address uh, the North Sydney Integrated Transport Program, which we're working with Transport for New South Wales on, uh, addresses a lot of the walking issues around the North Sydney CBD. It also has some impact on, on uh, providing better walking infrastructure between North Sydney, the North Sydney CBD and Curability. However, there are still some high priority routes uh, where we haven't done as much um, work on, on developing projects and taking those projects to the community, doing the community consultation to understand what infrastructure improvements we want along those routes before we can take those back to uh, Transport for New South Wales and, and work towards a, a shared outcome all, along those higher, higher priority routes. Things like uh, the Crow's Nest to St. Leonard's stretch of the Pacific Highway. Um, it's not only a, a major traffic thoroughfare, it's also a major pedestrian thoroughfare. And, and that pedestrian function will increase once the metro opens in 2024. So, so looking at some of that, uh, those projects as future facing projects where they support the development that's happening in these areas, but also deliver great place and walking outcomes for uh, existing communities ar around those locations. Um, one of the other things that's provided in the in the draft strategy is is what we call preferred infrastructure treatments, and it's it's a light analysis of how each of the infrastructure treatments, walking infrastructure treatments, addresses or in a lot of cases do not address the underlying needs of pedestrians, um, and the the reason we've said preferred infrastructure treatments is that. We recognize that in, it's not appropriate or possible in every case to provide build outs and zebra crossings and raised crossings and threshold treatments. Things like drainage or traffic capacity have to be considered when we're developing those projects, but it gives a guide to the development of projects in future and, and, and gives the project engineers um, some guidance on you know, the types of options that they should be looking at in developing projects in the future to add to, to council's work program. Uh, and obviously feed, feedback on the types of infrastructure and, and the preferred infrastructure treatments is something that we're, we're looking for feedback on um, and, and particularly how it affects other modes, you know, prioritized walking, prioritizing walking can't be seen in isolation. We have to judge that against the impacts that it has on, on other road users. Um, something I mentioned earlier is that council doesn't have, you know, absolute control of a lot of the classified arterial road network, but understanding what the community wants and, and what the best outcomes for walking are um, on those classified arterial routes and using that as the basis for an advocacy program to back to transport for New South Wales. That's, that's been the, the way that we've approached things like uh, the North City Integrated Transport Program, which was based on a piece of work that was done in council uh, called the CBD Master Plan. Um, so understanding the community's um, desires and, and how it impacts the delivery of uh, better walking outcomes and then using that as an advocacy tool. We're, we've been very successful in doing that. When we just go back and say, we'd like something done about a problem on the Pacific Highway, we have less success. Uh, in terms of knowing when we get there, uh, this is about, you know, understanding when we've achieved what we've set out to achieve. Now, there's some specific targets uh, identified in the draft strategy. Um, you know, a lot of them are, are um, just walking participation metrics. Um, and those, those metrics uh, will be put forward for inclusion in the community strategic plan once the policy is adopted. Um, and that Community strategic plan is reviewed annually or at the end of every term of council or, or both, I think. Um, and that, that keeps us accountable in terms of actually moving towards those defined outcomes. Um, so that's how we're going to uh, 
keep ourselves honest about what we're achieving as part of this strategy. Uh, and, and that's the end of the presentation, but uh, just to mention that uh, I think we'll, we'll take any questions that have been submitted uh, while I've been presenting, um, but there's also opportunity going forward up until the 14th of January um, to submit to, to the consultation and, uh, and those, uh, any submissions will be addressed as part of the report that goes back to council early in the next term of council. So uh, that's about all from me. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so we've we received a few comments and questions uh, prior to the um, uh, prior to, to this session today. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll go through those systematically, but if you have any, any, uh, any questions or comments, uh, don't be shy, just uh, include them in the, in the chat box there. Um, and you know, this session really was, was uh, intended as, as just an overview to give you an idea about the intent and the purpose and how the uh, walking strategy, the draft walking strategy is working. Um, there's a lot of detail there. There's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, content uh, to work through. Um, and so, you know, the 14th of January is the, uh, is the closing date uh, for, for those submissions. So we hope uh, you get involved. Uh, as I said at the outset, uh, the, the final strategy will be better off uh, if uh, the more people uh, make comment and, and provide feedback. So we'll just, uh, if we just go through some of those. Some of the pre-submitted questions. Um, I'll, I'll probably group them into uh, subject areas. Uh, there, there's, there's a couple of questions about uh, maintenance, uh, maintenance of footpaths. Now, the, this is more of a strategic outlook on where invest, investment in uh, new infrastructure and developing new policy will provide the best benefits. Uh, maintenance, uh, it, it's not separated from that. It's, it's managed separately, but um, obviously if you're looking at a, at, a, at a location and what's identified it as a problem is that the footpaths are uneven and, and falling apart, then maintenance may be part of the solution. Um, and, and we've got that prioritization framework where we can say, look, there, there's some areas of the LGA where um, rough and ready footpaths aren't having as much of a negative impact as rough and ready footpaths on military road, let's say, where you know there's a lot of pedestrian activity. So uh, this, this gives us more of a framework for uh, setting up our works program rather than um, identifying particular locations for maintenance. Um, there's also a, a, quite a location specific question about um, joining up some of the, net, the foreshore network. Um, the strategic net walking network that was defined in the draft strategy, um, it identifies some of those uh, what are more recreational routes as um, within a structure which kind of looks at high priority routes which are connecting two centers with a lot of pedestrian activity. activity. Um, so, so the infrastructure investment along that route has a economic function as well as a recreational function. And those two things are very, are linked, but um, the economic function of walking um, is, is sort of where this strategy was directed. Uh, and the, we took into account the recreational network because we recognize that's a very important part of the walking network. Um, but it's, it's not the, the main area of focus for, for the strategy. Um, and, you know, the particular connection that was, was mentioned, uh, um, McMahon's Point Wharf to the coal loader, I think that the route from Sawmillers round to the coal loader, you actually have to leave the foreshore and, and enter local streets and then kind of do a little waggle across or over the top of the, the headland or down into the valley and across. Um, and th there are some projects occurring in that area that will um, or could benefit the walking network. Uh, obviously, the Berries Bay Marina um, development, which is sort of under discussion at the moment, that may um, have some positive walking outcomes 
Um, but that's that's something that will be developed. Um, not not necessarily as a di direct response to the to the projects I've identified in the strategy, um, but but those projects are happening and they will have uh, walking benefits because the strategy identifies that every project should have walking as a consideration. Uh, those are the ones that we got pre-submitted. Is there anything, any others that we haven't covered? It doesn't look. Here's one. Um, so we've received one just there. Uh, we don't have the capacity to scroll. So uh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Interested to know what, uh, know that walking is given top priorities at transport mode. I live in Alfred Street, South Milsons Point. I am concerned that the proposed cycle path will lead to loss of recreation in green area in Bradfield Park North and as well will potentially lessen the footpath areas which are proposed as share cycle uh, slash walk areas. We need the advocacy from council to encourage an alternate route for cyclists, such as the use of the bridge lane, which would not impact on what is already a very small green space in this area. This is a, an, an item very close to Nigel's heart. Um, so as part of the North Sydney Integrated Transport Program, which we're uh, working with Transport for New South Wales on, um, one of the key outputs of, of that strategy is to um, have cycling considered in a much more integrated way um, as part of the Western Harbour Tunnel wearing a freeway upgrade uh, project that Transport for New South Wales are delivering. There's, there's a planning condition that requires Western Harbour Tunnel wearing a freeway upgrade to consider a, uh, an integrated active transport strategy and, and, and delivery of some of the outcomes identified in the North Sydney Integrated Transport Program. And one of those ac outcomes is a much more direct and uh, well-graded cycling route up the eastern side of the Warringah Freeway, which doesn't impact local roads. And, and that's something we've been working for a long time with them on. Um, obviously, there are some routes that are identified in the integrated cycling strategy that um, projects have been developed. Uh, they've been taken out for community consultation. And the feedback from the community was that on balance, the project that had been presented was was not supported and um, that feedback was taken and I, I think that's still the position of council that you know back to the drawing board we need to come up with a cycling option that doesn't impact the, the local walking infrastructure um, public open space and um, residential amenity in general so I think there's you know the feedback has come in about some of those cycling projects we're working towards some very different outcomes as part of some of the major transport for New South Wales projects uh, that are on the table at the moment. And, and yeah, that's that's how we're addressing that. Okay, another question has come through. Council does not seem to be as progressive as the City of Sydney and other local government areas when it comes to separation of pedestrians from hazards, most obviously traffic. What would it take to see this change? Uh, well, this is a good start. Yes, yeah, a walking strategy. That's 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 what we need. Um, but more seriously, I, I, I think um, the walking strategy and the transport strategy before that talks about a very, uh, a bit more of a nuanced approach to integration versus separation, because I think there's, there's some situations where separation is absolutely critical, um, you know, on some of the very important uh, regional traffic routes, which are also functioning in, in North Sydney as major walking routes, it's very important to have that separation. Whereas, you know, on, on local uh, residential streets, uh, you know, in cul-de-sacs and places like that, having separated infrastructure uh, is actually not as good an outcome as having a more integrated approach where people share the space and, and Drivers therefore take a bit more care and drive more slowly, and that's you know that's supported by a lot of uh, you know a lot of research that's been done to, to into uh, shared space design and, and stuff like that. And we've started delivering projects that uh, address that kind of uh, typology in places like uh, St Leonard's. Uh, we've got the Mitchell Street Plaza, which is a shared zone where traffic and pedestrians and cyclists all 
work within the same space and it's a very slow speed area and, it, and it's provided a really good uh, public domain outcomes. But where separation is really important is on bigger um, traffic routes. Um, and as I said before, uh, a lot of those ma major traffic routes are classified arterial roads, which we don't have direct um, control over what happens with them, but developing projects and taking them back to transport for New South Wales as part of a, a you know, a sensible advocacy program, um, I think would be a, a, a good place to start in terms of delivering separated infrastructure for pedestrians, things like uh, wider footpaths, you know, reintroducing parking to create that buffer between footpaths and the carriageway. All of those things are, are you know, really important in terms of improving walking outcomes. And, and that's, you know, all things that are sort of identified in the strategy, um, particularly if you're, if you're looking for that um, understanding of the types of infrastructure that, um, you know, initially we're, we're putting forward for support as a preferred treatment or not putting forward support because we think there, there's some better outcomes that can be achieved in other ways. Um, the, the section of the, the draft strategy that talks about preferred infrastructure treatments, if you have a look through that, that's, that's and provide feedback. And that's, that's uh, evolving and, and we'll take feedback and try and get a better understanding of the, of the community's uh, thinking around that kind of uh, infrastructure typology. Yeah, perhaps I would add to that. One of the real points of tension over the last several decades, and it's 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 becoming pointier and pointier as Sydney grows, uh, is the the desire by many um, many members of the community, many members of the political class, let's say, to to ensure primacy of the efficiency of the road network. And sometimes that comes at, at the expense of a pedestrian comfort or, or safety. Uh, now that's changing slowly. The, the Transport for New South Wales has, has um, started or has introduced this doctrine of um, place and movement uh, and, and trying to kind of rebalance or, 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 or identify exactly what the purpose of each corridor is and, and whether there's a, there's a mix of, of place where there's a greater emphasis on, on on the engagement of pedestrians and, and, and land uses and things versus the absolute movement corridors, which are, you know, freeways. Um, and so the vast majority of Sydney's kind of sits in between um, those and, and, and getting some reasonable balance, uh, particularly with the mindset of we've got to get cars from A to B in the quickest possible manner. Um, that's increasingly being challenged, but that, that's, uh, I think, one of the fundamental um, uh, issues that we uh, and, and transport agencies are constantly wrestling with. Did you want to add to that? No, no, I think that covers it. Well, if, if there's no more questions, Jenna, is that? So as I said, uh, thank you for those of you that, that, that uh, joined us. Um, hopefully this has been useful. Um, there is much more detail in the actual strategy. It's a draft. So plenty of opportunity to, uh, to provide comment and help shape its, uh, its uh, final uh, refinement and resolution. Um, this will be placed, as I said, at the uh, beginning of this uh, presentation, this will be placed on the, uh, on the website um, and opportunities for uh, further response uh, up until the 14th of January, if you can manage that. Um, so thanks for joining us. Um, it's been a small session, but uh, a good one, hopefully. Uh, and hopefully you've uh, found that useful. So thank you. Thank you.